Buenos dias, S.A. Como estas? Tony here. Wow, that's creating some unwanted shadows on my head there. But I want to wear my new hat. Check out my new hat. My new sombrero. It's, uh, everyone always says, oh, Tony the Tiger, Tony the Tiger. So now I have a Tony the Tiger hat. Hey guys, how are you doing? I'm here in my new casa. And today I want to talk about getting out of a rut. When you're feeling stuck in life, no momentum. When you're suffering because you're not moving forward, you're not creating the thing you want to create. You're not moving to where you want to move. I like to do these philosophy live streams. To practice, okay, El Turco, to practice Spanish, esta es muy bien. Voy en Augusto por Medellín. Oh, you'll be there in August. All right. Turco, let's uh, give me a shout when you come to town. Definitely. I should put uh, an Instagram account or something, but you can find me on Instagram under Tony's Travels if you search for it. I haven't really promoted it, but that's the way people can get in touch when they come through town. I don't know if I'll still be here. Yeah, I'll still be here in August. So I decided to stop traveling for a bit and stay here in Medellin. And the reason is, is because I work online and I, I need to make money because I've just been burning through my money. And really, because I've been traveling and focusing so much on my travel channel, trying to get to 1,000 subscribers so I can get monetized, I neglected my copywriting business, my content writing business, my life coaching business, uh, my dating coaching business, and all of these other things that I do, my, my work work. And every day I just kept thinking about it and thinking about it and feeling worse and realizing, okay, I'm getting into a rut. Here, I'll use my mouse as an example. The rut is a little hole. And you're going along and you have momentum and then you go boop, and you get stuck. And because it's a little difficult, you just kind of, you just kind of give up, right? So can any of you relate to that when you, when you just get stuck? So I started reading and when I get stuck, I usually need something to get myself going again because I'm not the kind of person who likes to relax too much. If I just relax, uh, I get sad. You know, like people who like to go on vacation, uh, they work for 12 months a year, five or six days a week. And then they go on vacation for two weeks and they get drunk on a resort and they, they think this is relaxing, but they come home with even more problems. Hey, Limitless, how's it going? How's Medellin? How is the safety? Are you in El Poblado? No, no, I'm actually in Loralis, and I haven't had any problems with safety. You can see in my videos, I'm walking around holding my GoPro, and you hear stories about people getting uh, drugged when they mess with the, when they mess around with the, what do you call them? The prostitutes, the escorts down in the parks or in the bars. People get scoplamine, you know, they get this stuff in their out and their drink and it turns you into a zombie and makes you empty your bank account. So if you want to research that, it's pretty terrifying, but I'm not really messing around in bars. I'm not walking around drunk late at night. And as far as safety from everyone I've talked to, Medellin is, is quite safe. And I mean, a lot of cities are dangerous. I'm sure it's not as safe as like Boise, Idaho or something, but I haven't felt any bad vibes and I've been, I've been nervous going out with my GoPro, but you can see in my videos, I'm overcoming those fears. So one of my philosophies is if something scares you run straight towards it, because when you go straight towards your fear and you overcome your fear, you're going to feel good. You're going to feel stronger, right? I wasn't producing videos for like three, four or five days. And I started to feel like, I don't want to make another video. What am I going to film in this city? Do people even care? I don't feel like making another video. I felt myself getting into this rut. I wasn't doing my work. I wasn't making my YouTube videos. And so I started reading this book, this book called, uh, on my Kindle. And it's called how to be an imperfectionist. Look it up. How to be an imperfectionist, not a perfectionist, the opposite. 
And there's some really great, 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 there's some really great quotes. Yeah. Yeah, you've been there, eh? Hey, Danny. So there's some really great quotes in this book. And if you guys are into like improving your life and becoming freaking awesome, then let's go through some of these together and we're going to work it out. Because I'm sure every one of you has some place in their life where you're not moving, you know, you're not going, so you're not getting shit done. So let's look at this book and see what they say about it. Right? The perfectionist mind, if you embrace your identity with your flaws included, it's a powerful defense against even the harshest criticism. So I have a little brother and he's an, I don't want to pick on him, but I'm going to use him as an example. He is an amazing musician. He makes beats, he raps, but he's very insecure about criticism. So when he puts stuff out on social media, he won't get if he doesn't get enough likes or validation, he gets demotivated and he goes and he deletes it. Right. So me starting making my YouTube channel, when I first started doing it, no one was watching my videos and I put out 10, 20, 30 videos. Where's my viewers? I'm getting like 50 views and it's very demotivating. And then people will come on and say, how dare you say that about Guatemala city? How dare you say that about Playa del Carmen? Who are you to judge and who are you to say this place isn't safe or who are you to do this? And I was getting a, like quite often some nasty criticism, <laughs> right? But those, those criticisms, when you learn how to let them just go through you and you keep doing what you're doing despite the criticism, you realize those critics are really helping you. They're really there to help you and to show you things you might not think about or to point out a truth. And even if they're wrong, you don't have to let it get you emotional. You just have to keep moving forward. So little bro, put your stuff out there. Please let the world know how amazing your work is. And the people who don't like it, fuck them. <laughs> yeah, get that book. It's, it's good so far. I'm about 24% into it. And it's motivated me to start doing more live streams. Oh, here comes the guy. Selling a uh, aguacate. Thanks, Danny. Yeah, you're a real cat too. Listen to this guy. Aguacate. You're selling uh, what do you call those aguacates? Uh, avocados. <laughs> Shit, he's gonna come yelling past here. So anyway, uh, I'm eating very healthy here because every day people are coming past my casa selling fresh fruit, tamales, like anything you want. And it's funny because I'll be making videos and these these guys are selling pinas. Okay, so if you embrace your identity with your flaws included, think about this. I don't have the perfect body i don't have the perfect voice i actually think i sound a little bit like kermit the frog what hi Hulk. i'm kermit the frog <laughs> you know my teeth are not perfect i got a big pimple on my neck or maybe it's a bug bite i don't know and sometimes i look at myself with my uh, gopro because my gopro has such high uh, i'm using my webcam on my computer has such high sharpness that it shows every pore in my face and sometimes like you can see my, my my forehead, it looks like really wrinkled and dark. And so I played with the sharpness. And when I turn the sharpness down, my skin looks much better, but the world gets blurry. So with sharpness really high, the world looks amazing. But when I switch it around, it makes me look kind of old. I'm figuring it out. But this the first time I saw this, I was in shock. And I thought, oh, my God, I don't look. Here's the title, How to Be an Imperfectionist. I wanted everything to be perfect. That's the moral of the story. I want everything to be like, I want to look perfect. I want the audio to be perfect. But but that's not going to get you anywhere if you want everything to be perfect. Because look at this. I am not perfect and I'm almost at 1,000 subscribers. Almost. It's taking me forever. And so you have to not – you have to work despite your flaws. And actually your flaws are your strength. That's the beauty of something like YouTube People don't want to see the perfect looking woman with the most perfect body and the perfect personality. They want to they want to hear that girl fart. They want to see her on her bad days when she's in a bad mood as well as when she's wonderful and bubbly and beautiful. You have to do it despite your flaws. OK, 
Okay, let's see what else we got here. Another quote in this book. Yeah, it's Sunday here, so it's a religious day here in Medellin, Colombia. And I thought, I have great internet today. I'm just going to sit here and talk to talk to you guys for a little while. My book, okay. Okay, in a school teaches us. Let's talk about schooling and how school can mess people up. School teaches us that A efforts bring A results. Real life shows us that A efforts only give us a chance at A results. So you go to school and you you you, you, str <laughs> you struggle and you suffer under this system of like learn this, memorize this, and then reproduce it. And once in a while you get creative activities and stuff. But a lot of the people who I know who are the most intellectual, smartest, hardest working people did terrible in school. They did really, really bad. Einstein apparently was terrible in school. Right? A effort only gives you a chance at A results. So it's okay if you don't get A results. That's the trick, right? You might get an A if you study and follow all the rules and remember everything in school, but in real life, you might follow all the rules to like say, make a YouTube video or write a novel and then it flops. And then you get stuck, you don't wanna try again, right? I had videos that flop, I have, I've written books and they didn't do very well. But look at everything you learn from your mistakes. This is the way you have to see it. Even though you feel like you're stuck, there's a little mousy and he's stuck. You got to give it a little bit of push to get out of there. If you learn, say, this much, here's a little meter and it's a video game. And you're trying to accomplish something and you're gaining experience. You know, you're going, here's the Guatemala, or sorry, Colombian country here. You're going up, your level's going up, your level's going up, you're gaining power, you're gaining, oh, and it didn't work, that thing didn't work, you didn't get the girl, you didn't get the job, your uh, business plan failed, you, you, you fucked up at the gym, started eating too much, and you go down a little bit. So you stop, and you go, oh, I need to take a break. This is dangerous. Taking breaks leads to stagnation. It stops your momentum, right? So you got to realize if you've made it this far, you're not going to sink back down and forget everything you've learned. You can only go up. As soon as you start again on that project, you're going to keep going. You're going to keep rising. That's the beauty of learning and improving. You might lose a little weight, but you still know in your head how to work out. Your body still remembers when it was in shape. Your mind still remembers when it was active. When you're reading a lot of books and you're creating content or you were working on your hobby, your, your soul still remembers what it feels like to be happy. You don't have to live in depression for the rest of your life. There was a time when you were happy and your soul remembers that. You can get back to it, okay? So you just need to get the momentum going again. It's Sunday in Medellin, Felix. You'll see people biking, skating, and running. Some streets closed for cars. Yeah, I'm going to go out a little later. It's still early here. It's only, uh, well, it's 1 p.m., but after I do some work here and talk to you guys, I'm going to go out and explore a little bit. Let's see what the next note is here. The imperfectionist. How to be an imperfectionist. So the problem with perfection is perfection stops people from doing things. It stops people from taking action, right? I might be like, well, I don't want to uh, – create a new video until I get a new shirt because they've seen all of my shirts. <laughs> like, this is crazy thinking, or I don't want to put out that album until I learn how to control my voice better to make the perfect song. But listen to all the singers in the world that have weird voices like Getty Lee from Rush. There's rappers who don't sound like this. They sound like this and they're still amazing, right? Because they own their voice. Look at the Smashing Pumpkins, that guy, Billy Corgan. His voice is like, walk out in 1979, right? And if you if you hear him talking, you would think, no way that guy could sing. He sounds like a Muppet. He sold millions and millions of records with that voice because it's not perfect. It's unique. You have a unique gift. You can use your unique gift and improve it. Instead of focusing on what you consider a flaw, Focus on your strengths. Your flaws will improve, and they're probably not even flaws. Ben, do I believe in regression? 
Well, no, I don't. I think it's bullshit. Regression. I've never regressed. You only improve. You just get stuck in a rut. And then you feel like you're regressing, but you're not making progress. People need to make progress to be happy. You need to know that something you did today is going to make you feel better tomorrow. When you're not doing that thing, you get stuck. So here's the big secret of motivation to get out of the rut. If you're stuck and you're not moving, most people think that it's their brain that's broken. And so if I could just figure out how to fix the motivation in my mind, that would fix my emotional feelings because I'm depressed or something or I'm not taking action. And then when I fix that, I'm going to go and do that thing I need to do. Approach women, go traveling, get muscles, lose weight. You know, the main the main core things are like love and sex, uh, economic situation and health. But it's much easier if you focus on just taking an action first, because if you take the action, that's going to fix your emotions. Like I'm doing this video. After I do this video, I'm going to feel great. I'm going to feel good. I didn't want to do a video. I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to work on the, you know, and I realized from reading this book, no. So they did this study and this is a, uh, Hey, there's a fly on my screen. Get out of here. They did that. <laughs> they did this study, this university in America, and they had a bunch of people do power poses. They said, okay, here's a task. You have to like clean an office or do some, some sort of task that was difficult. You needed, people needed motivation to do it. So they had a group of people go like, do power poses. And this is a power pose. You stand with your arms up. And you go, yeah. And you get yourself pumped. You go, life is awesome. You know, <laughs> spinning back this. You know, throw some kicks, get, get, get hyped, jump around, clap. Woo! And then they had another group of people, you know, turn my hat around to show the other group of people like this. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm ready to do it. I guess I'm ready. You know, they did this study with like a lot of people. And what happened was the people with the power poses were 50% more motivated and into taking the action. Because they'd already started taking an action. Instead of being passive, sitting down, thinking about how to motivate themselves, you started doing something. You started doing one thing, and that changed their emotions. It got their mindset moving. Right. So people who are in a rut, they think, I'm going to read the right book. And reading a book is really great. Or watching a YouTube video is really great. Getting some information. But what's going to move you forward is taking one small action. Creating one small habit. And this is the hard part, isn't it? Like, how do I even take that one step when I've been stuck for so long? Sometimes you need a little push. You need a help. That's why people hire life coaches. They give you a little push. What's up, Mad Mouse? Yeah, when I'm not traveling, I'm motivating. I do this more for myself than for anything because... I got to I got to feel like I'm improving. I'm doing something today that'll make tomorrow better. Okay, so that's how you do it. Does that make sense? Are any of you guys stuck? Are you stuck somewhere? Not feeling like you're reaching your potential, not feeling like maybe you have money problems. You you're you're you you don't know what to do. Everything you've tried isn't working. You're not making the the pesos, right? What's one thing you could do to get that? Well, I can't because here's what happens. This is why people also get stuck is because their fantasy, their ego creates roadblocks. I want to get a girlfriend. Say you're thinking this and I want to go meet some women. How do I do this? I got to go out into the world and approach women because Tinder's not working. Well, I just don't really feel like it. Listen. You don't have to do everything. You don't have to become amazing with women. You don't have to become Richard Branson, <laughs> who's amazing with women. All you got to do is put on your shoes and walk down to the corner and say hello to one person, one woman. Hi, how are you? Just to start. And then you can go home and feel good, okay? Because you did one thing. That one little thing might be enough to push you out of the rut and get you going again, get you being social, get you going to parties, 
put you on that path of working. Because what happens is if you're working towards something and you're not making progress, it can be very demotivating. Like me trying to grow my YouTube channel. How long I've been doing this? Eight months? I feel like I should have like 30,000 subscribers by now and be hanging out with Bald and Bankrupt. Okay, I'm almost at a thousand. It's kind of demotivating at, at times. So what I do is I picture in my mind this bright, beautiful future where I can do this for a living and I can talk to people like you guys and help you guys and give you advice and inspire you and make you laugh. And in return, you support me, right? You help me. And I get to travel the world and meet people and share my experiences to inspire other people not to be so afraid. So you have to have this bright vision if it's wanting to get women, if it's wanting to get rich. Because without that vision pulling you, you're not going to want to get up. This is part of the mental motivation. You're not going to want to get out of bed and go out and start digging a ditch to build a new driveway for your apartment that you're supposed to renovate so you can flip it. Or to go to work to get a to really perform so you can get a raise, get noticed by your boss. You're not going to want to because you don't have a reason. One of the reasons I got out of my depression that I had years ago and started traveling the world, started my own business and created kind of an interesting life for myself was because I was very unhappy with my life and I created a vision. Someone said, hey, did you know in Thailand you can live on a beach for like $5 a day, rent a motorcycle for $5 a day and have an amazing life for like $1,000 a month and you're going to meet wonderful people, see amazing things. And I thought, wow, that sounds amazing, but I'm broke. I went to my boss and I said, I want to raise, I want more responsibility and I, and I want to kick ass at this job. And he didn't believe me because I was one of the worst performing people in my, in my job, which was installing televisions on people's walls. And cause I would, had no reason to want to do well, right? I was stuck until I wanted something. I said, I want to go to this other country where I can have fun and date hot women and travel around on motorcycles. I started hustling. I started solving problems and I saved up $5,000 in about two months. Just from, and I quit. And my boss said, you're quitting now that you've become a man, right? Now that you're working hard and for you women, it's the same thing. It's just a metaphor. Now that you've become responsible and a problem solver, and a doer, I'm ready to promote you. You want to go away. That's the way it is. When you want something and it's bright, it's going to pull you out of that hole. But you got to think, that's the that's the intellectual aspect. You need to sit down. You need to sit down and really contemplate what it is that makes you feel good. I can go deeper into this stuff, guys. I'm trained in meditation, neuro-linguistic programming, hypnosis. I love this stuff. Thomas Mundo, how do you get more subscribers? I, Well, you can share it on social media. If you like one of my videos, that's the best way. Put me on, put one of my videos on Facebook and, and just, you know, leave a comment and like and subscribe. That's all you can do on YouTube. But, you know, what I really need to do to grow my channel is meet other YouTubers. And so I shouted out a friend of mine that I, a virtual friend, but he's, his name is Seal on Tour. And he's got a channel that's similar to my size and we're buddies and we're going to help each other out. Right. But if I met someone bigger and I did a video with them, it would grow like really fast, but I'm still learning. I'm still learning how to make videos. I'm still learning how to do this stuff. You guys, this is the thing about perfection. I'm getting dehydrated here. Nothing's going to be perfect. You have to start as an amateur, whatever it is you're waiting to become perfect at, you will never be perfect. You will become skilled. You will eventually be masterful, but you have to make all the mistakes to get there. Don't be afraid to make mistakes and don't be afraid to make a fool of yourself. I get a lot of comments from people who say, how dare you say this about my country? And I've been, I'm an author too, and I worked in dating. Okay, so when you work in dating, you get a lot of haters. And this is what usually stops people is their imaginary voice telling them what they think other people think about them. What do they all think about me? Do you know how hard it is to walk around with a 
video camera in your hand and, and not be self-conscious. I can see in my videos and hear in my voice when I'm self-conscious. But the only way to become great at something is to run straight at your insecurities and kick them in the face. Duh. <laughs> Wherever you live, shout out Tony's YouTube travels in the subway. If you want to, I don't mind. Videotape that. That would be great. Let's look at another quote from this book, How to Be an Imperfectionist, How to Get Out of a Rut. Perfectionism significantly weakens us over time by making us overprotective against mistakes. Pretty self-explanatory, right? If you try to be perfect, you're never going to allow yourself to make mistakes. And that's how you become a master, by making mistakes. Next. Oh, this is a really good one, especially for you guys like myself who spend a lot of time on YouTube, <laughs> which is TV. Don't, don't think it's not, unless you're watching me. Perfectionists and procrastinators love TV because nobody watches TV incorrectly. Replace that with video games. Nobody plays video games incorrectly. Or what do girls waste time on? Girls waste time on Pinterest. Nobody watches Pinterest incorrectly. So you do things to waste time that require little effort, like watching a YouTube video or watching TV or playing a video game. And that's why perfectionists love it because they can't mess it up. They can't screw it up. Rap fan, rap fan, my new book is coming out. Well, I wrote a novel called Islands. And it's about a guy who goes backpacking around Asia and it's about 60 or 80,000 words. And I finished it, but I wasn't happy with it. It was more fiction. It wasn't like a thousand tiny failures. Uh, my other novel, I wrote a novel. This is a different niche completely, but some of you are following me from there. But, uh, God, I almost went bankrupt because I wrote that book and I didn't publish it. And the, the, I sent it to some people and they weren't interested. And I lost my confidence, honestly. I lost my mojo and I had to make money. And so I got back into working as a writer for other people and coaching. And I made more money again. But one day when my plan is when my channel gets big and it's making me an income, that's going to free up a lot of time for me to work on my other passion, which is writing novels. I love writing novels and science fiction and memoir and uh, philosophy, self-help. But video is so much easier. It's so much easier to get your message out, right? It's so much easier to connect with people over video faster. Tenzin Labu. Imagine having 79 Apple live in person hanging out. There's a lot of folks in the meantime. You'll reach that big number one day with the purity of your content, Tony. Hey, thanks a lot. It was a great book. You're a talented writer. Well, thanks, man. You guys can still find that book if you want to. I wrote a novel called A Thousand Tiny Failures. It's about a guy living in Montreal, Canada, and he's obsessed with trying to get girls. And it's funny and debaucherous, and you might learn something. Let's look at the next, the next quote. The best results in sports and life come from training. When trained in something to the point that it's second nature and subconscious – Let's look at that closer. When trained in something to the point that it's second nature and subconscious, your conscious mind can relax. And a relaxed mind is more effective and useful than a tense mind because it can focus more easily. Unconscious competence. That's where I'm trying to get with my video skills. When I just crank out the video and I, I'm automatically in state and I know what to say and I'm, I'm on fire. Most people, they don't, try to learn something because they don't have any conscious competence. They're consciously incompetent. That means you're very aware that you suck at talking to strangers. You're very aware that you're not going to be able to do some MMA, some jujitsu. You're going to get your butt kicked. <laughs> like I, I had to learn to play tennis. My friend was always like, come play tennis with me. And I thought, no, I don't want to do that. That's stupid. Tennis is boring. Tennis sucks. This is what people, their ego does when they know they're going to suck at it. So why wouldn't I play tennis with this friend? 
and I would hit it and go bong over here and bong over there. And I try to run and fall on my face and I, I got mad and I said, this game sucks. I hate tennis. But he was he was a great teacher and he just said, it's okay. You're allowed to hate tennis. Embrace your emotions. Just keep playing the game while you hate it. <sighs> Even though it sucks, just keep doing it. And don't resist the fact that you don't like doing it. Just keep doing it. Most people don't want to feel those uncomfortable emotions of trying to learn something new, trying to do something new, go somewhere new, a scary new country, a scary new neighborhood. There's a membrane of uncomfortableness that you got to push through. So I went to this wall and I started whacking the ball at this wall. Ugh. And it bounced this way and bounced that way. And then I put in some earphones. And I started listening to like Joe Rogan's podcast or something. It became a learning exercise for me. And eventually the ball started connecting with my racket over and over and over. And I got high off that feeling. Wow, it keeps coming. I felt like a Jedi, you know, hitting the lightsaber laser bolts. And after a while, I had to go to that wall every day because I became skilled. And when I went back to play tennis with my friend, I'm like, crack, serve, point, crack, serve, point. And I, I had a big epiphany about this and how that metaphor of playing tennis related to when I got over my shyness. I used to be very shy. I was a super insecure dude. I was super insecure. I was nervous around not just beautiful women, around people. Like the guy you see in the videos where I can walk around and talk to strangers, I feel a awkwardness and a fear sometimes, but I've conditioned myself to turn my emotion off so that I can do what I need to do. And most people are not willing to face their fear to get past that, that hurdle of, to become unconsciously competent where you can do something without thinking about it. You've trained yourself so much that you don't need to think anymore. And that's when you see that rock star who looks like a master, you know, playing drums like a, like a genius. How, how He's so talented. She's so talented. Look at her dance. Look at her spin and jump. And, oh, she must have it in her blood. Look at the salsa people in Colombia or, or whatever dance they're doing. How do they do it? You don't see them in the park every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night practicing their routines, making the mistakes for four hours a night so that when they get on stage in front of people at the club, they look like they're magic. Yeah, people is in my subscribers. If you mean on this channel, it's going to grow. It's going to get there. Like when I get to a thousand, the next step is going to be five thousand. My first... <laughs> My first step was 100. Uh, back when I started in Mexico, I was like, I just want to get to 100. And I said, I'm going to make 50 videos. And after 50 videos, if I don't have 100 subscribers, I'm going to quit and do something else because I obviously have no skill in this game. <laughs> and it happened. I made it. And so even though I feel like I should have 10,000 subscribers, I'm very, very grateful for all of you, you know, for coming and giving me some confidence even though i you shouldn't seek validation for your confidence like men trying to talk to girls and the girls don't want to give them the phone numbers after five tries and then they go oh, i must be ugly i'm not worthy of god you know it's just you got to keep trying and develop that skill set and that confidence that women like confidence comes from experience so when you get stuck say your business isn't working I'm running some online ads for my online business and they're not working. <laughs> I spent a lot of time on these ads. I'm spending money and they're not working. What did I do this morning? I was like this, laying on my bed, just, oh, what do I do? Like watching YouTube videos, feeling sorry for myself. But because I'm reading this book and he said, you can't think your way into feeling better. You have to take an action. What, do you, what am I going to do? I'm Tony the Tiger. Tigers hunt. You do something. Even little things add up a little bit every day. I'm on here doing a live stream. This is going to grow my subscribers a little bit today. Maybe a little bit tomorrow. Maybe in a year from now, I'll look back at this video and it'll have 10,000 views. I don't know, but I'm doing something. You got to do something. No, just think about it. When you do something then your emotional core will correct itself. You'll stop feeling bad and you're going to want more of that feeling and you're going to keep going and you're, eventually you're going to see results and you're going to come out of that ditch.
keep my dating philosophy separate from your travel channel. Well, dude, dating, uh, I think dating is just part of life. If women want to talk to me and about dating, I love talking about dating. I don't, I don't know. It's in the live stuff. I think it's different because I'm traveling, right? But I'm doing a live stream. I can only do it from my computer until I get a thousand subscribers. Then I can live stream from my phone and do the more travel stuff. But I just want to talk philosophy because it makes me feel good. It doesn't matter if it's about dating or anything. Dating is very universal. People always want to come back to their penis and their vagina. <laughs> Freud was right. Okay, let's look at the let's look at another quote. Thanks, guys. If you uh, if you're having fun, remember to give me the thumbs up, and those comments are awesome because YouTube likes that. And subscribe if you haven't. And thanks for joining me on a Sunday. I'm surprised you don't have anything better to do than watch me. But we're we're getting work done here. Okay, I'll go to my notes again. Rumination, need for approval. Let's check out rumination. Unrealistic expectations. Oh, these are chapters. Yeah, the main, the best quote that I've gotten out of here so far. Okay, it's easier to change your mind and emotions by taking action than it is to change your actions by trying to think and feel differently. Okay, so I know NLP, hypnosis, and all this stuff. And when I work with life coaching clients, I'll do this. I'll try to change their mind and their emotions to get them to take action. And quite often it's very effective. But what's more effective is when they take an action and then they have a hard time stopping, right? I know that if I go too many days without making a new video, I lose momentum. I'm going to lose that drive. So I have to keep doing it. That's why you'll look in eight months. I've never gone one week without making a travel video. Most people, they just don't see the results they want. They get discouraged and they quit. And they were so close. You're almost there. You know, you're going up in levels. It's like a video game. As you go up the level, you hit level two, level three, level four. Oh, level four gets hard. The bosses are difficult. They're bigger. They have more skills. It's like playing that game Dark Souls. Have you ever played Dark Souls? It's like the hardest game ever. But when you, if you come back, I'll come back to that game like six months later and go, okay, I'm going to play some Dark Souls. I'll finally defeat that boss and go, wow, I still remember all those skills that I had. I was just a bit rusty. And sometimes you need to take time away from something to get a bit of perspective. The problem is most guys will take time away and not come back. So in my opinion, it's better to just keep going while you have the momentum. Do not stop. Travel-wise, it's easy. When I'm in a rut, I just get up and go to somewhere else. I'll get on a bus, get on a plane, change my state. It changes my state, and I'll make a video while I'm doing it. If I'm writing a book, I get up and I write every single day. No, there's no day off. And it doesn't matter if I write one page, 10,000 pages, or one sentence. I write something. If it's one sentence, that easily turns into a paragraph. If I can write a paragraph, I can write a page. And that's how I've written multiple books, multiple novels. I've got 60 YouTube videos now. I've dated a lot of beautiful women, just to say, because I got up and put on my shoes and went out the door to socialize. Anyone can do this. You don't have to be stuck. You just have to move. Hey, Felix from Quebec, Canada. Oh, bonjour. Comment ça va? Oh, tabernacle. I love Quebec. Quebec is amazing. Yeah, so you can believe in yourself, but if you don't move and do something, it doesn't matter how much you think about it. You have to do something, and that's going to put you into the state to keep going. Start with something small. You don't have to be like, oh, well, guys, in the comments, give me one of your goals that you would love to to do, but you've not been moving towards it, and, and I'll see if I can help you. Cold showers every morning. Tenzin will get you out of your rut and routine will hurt. Yeah, cold showers, man. I'm such a sissy. I love my warm shower. <laughs> uh, I'm in a, my nice Airbnb. It's got like a very warm shower. Hey, do you guys uh, want to take a look at my Airbnb? I showed it a bit in my other video, but I'm going to walk you around here. 
the casa. Let's go. Here's my, here's my bedroom. When my Tinder dates come through, it's where the magic might happen. I'm trying Tinder. It's a bit dark, but uh, check out the space, man. Look at all of this space. And it's for 300 US dollars I'm paying a month for this place. But I have a lot of roommates. A shower. That's, well, that's a shower. It's not so interesting. Down here, we've got a uh, kitchen. Man, this camera is really bad on such an expensive computer. <laughs> it's like a MacBook Air 2020. Uh, the kitchen, but you know, downstairs is nice, but the upstairs kicks buttocks. Uh, natural light. Look at this. Natural skylight. Nice artwork. And this is the best. This is the yoga room and a nice hallway. Sounds like someone's watching TV. Oh. We have a uh, blue hair watching TV. <laughs> is this shit live? It is live. Sorry. Uh. <laughs> I just uh, invaded her privacy a little bit. And here's the outside. I have a steam room over here. An actual steam room. Yeah, so you can get very good value in Medellin. It's, it's quite amazing the kind of value you can get. And if I really want to look like a, if I really want to look like a guru, I can sit in my beanbag chair here. But let's see. Okay, Are you ready? Are you going to park RV sometime soon? Yeah, that's on my. Yeah, definitely. I've just been trying to get caught up on work, but Park RV is next. You go up a tram, and one of my roommates went up there, and he said that he hit, like, uh, when you get to the top, you have to take a bus to the park. So it's not right at the top of the tram line. And he didn't go because he said he thought the park was up there. Uh, the Metro Cable to Park RV, beautiful hike. Nice. Yeah, I love hiking. I think I'm going to find a someone to go with me that wants to be on the video rather than just me walking around the forest by myself. Maybe a girl, if I can find a girl. I want to be able to talk with strangers like you do. It's amazing in Guatemala. Well, thank you. Mucho gracias. Yeah, to talk to strangers is... Uh, not everyone is born like that. You know, I had to really work on my shyness for years. I was very, very shy to be able to do that. And anyone can do it if you want to. If you want to be better at being social, talking to talking to people, meeting girls, meeting guys. You got to run straight towards whatever scares you and kick it in the face. Okay, so uh, I am going to depart now. I think that's it for today. What are the main takeaways? Instead of trying to make yourself feel better or think new thoughts to get yourself to, to do something, start doing one small thing anyway, regardless of how you feel. And then you're going to change how you feel and it'll make it very easy to keep doing that thing. It's simple. The hard part is just giving yourself that little push. Ugh. So do one thing every day and you will see that over a period of time grow into something beautiful and amazing. You'll transform yourself. I promise. Okay. Oh, if you want to buy me a cerveza, my PayPal link is up there. Cervezas aren't very much money down here in Colombia, but, uh, Adios, amigos and amigas. Have an amazing day.